Okay, let's go with the rippling. First of all, um, some general concepts. We know that breast augmentation is the procedure number one in, in cosmetic surgery. Um, in last year, it was 15% uh, of all surgical procedures. Uh, I don't do aesthetic medicine, I only do aesthetic surgery. And in our team, it's around 70%. In fact, we are concentrated in breast augmentation and in high def lipo. Also, another thing that is growing a lot is a composite breast augmentation. It's around 22% of growing in last year. As uh, Dr. Forcada said yesterday, um, I also use it uh, in the, in, more often in a second surgery. In the first surgery, it's difficult for me to explain to the patient that she will have a best result with a double surgery with a, a breast implant and a fat graft. Although, as you see, it's growing a lot. Okay, what's the rippling? You know, we know that the rippling are those waves, those wrinkles that have the, the implant, the silicone gel implant or the saline implants. And these modulations are transmitted to the skin. Usually they are more visible on the lateral side of the breast and also on the, on the neckline. Why? Because these are the areas with less coverage. Also they are more evident when the, the woman leans forward. It would be this case. And grade 3, the, the most severe grade, is visible always. <coughs> what does it depend on an implant having more or less rippling? It depends on two things. We are talking about, about this now. The first thing is the cohesiveness of the gel, the silicone gel, and the second thing is the degree of the filling of the implant. The cohesiveness gel, actually, it, nearly all the implants we use are type 3, the maximum cohesive gel. One and two are really not, I think that they are not used today or, or very few. The maximum cohesive gel is used specifically for anatomical implants, but also for round implants. The second thing is the degree of filling. <coughs> please, please, young surgeons, try to avoid implants filled 85-90% in very thin patients, in patients with a pinch test upper pole less than 2 cm. Try always to use 100% filled implants. Okay, what things can we do for avoiding rippling, uh, for preventing rippling? What things can we do for treating rippling? Right, the first thing is be careful with very thin patients. Patients who are in a BMI um, below 17 are patients of high risk of rippling. Also, patients that have a pinch test, an upper pole pinch test below 2 or even be below 2.5 centimeters. What we can do for avoiding rippling is trying to use the subpectoral plane, the dual plane, also to choose high cohesive implants, avoid saline implants, saline implants have more rippling, obviously, and one of the reasons most common to have uh, rippling is what also uh, Dr. Forcada was telling yesterday, ptosis grade one, pseudoptosis, and also these patients that you should do a mastopexy but you don't do it, as the chest is down, the implant will make more rippling. So if you are trying to avoid the scars with, uh, with a, a kind of implant that will allow you not to do a mastopexy, probably you will have rippling. Solutions for rippling are several solutions. One obvious is change the implant if it's not the highest cohesive and put the highest cohesive. But there are another two that are to apport tissue. And to apport tissue you have two possibilities. One is to apport fat, the other one is to, to make a, a, a pectoral flap. We do quite a lot of cross-linking in order to, to have uh, more fat that impregnates in the breast. This is the final result. Usually we use around 100 cc of fat per side. Here we used 
145 and 125. If we compare the before and after, we saw this separation that here is a lot better, and also the rippling that has improved. What he did was a pectoralis flap that was to advance the pectoralis around three, four centimeters down. Before that, he, he did a capsulotomy in order to traction the pectoral. And this was after doing. The pectoral was here in a, in a dual plane three, and now it's here in dual plane one. So we have wind between three, four centimeters. And in this side, this side is well covered, and this side we're going to do lipofilling. So, rippling is often inevitable. It's one of the biggest problems we have in breast augmentation. What things we have to do? The, the most important things is choose the correct plane and correct implant. And correct implant means fill 100% and high positive, high cohesive silicone. Thank you. Thank you very much. The sigmas get maybe, maybe congenital or maybe iatrogenical. Uh, typically, the most common, the most important cause is uh, after a breast augmentation is iatrogenical. As you know, is the loss of the intermammary groove caused by the medial displacement of the implants. Usually, the cause of this is that you have made the pocket too wide in the middle area. So what this causes a compromise of the mid-external fascia with the elevation of the parastabana skin. <clears throat> for, for young surgeons, the most important thing to avoid sigmastia is to have uh, to leave three centimeters of separation between both breasts in a breast augmentation. That means that between the middle line and the breast, we should leave 1.5 centimeters at least. When I began uh, about 15 years ago, I was aggressive with the breast augmentation, with, with the neckline of the breast augmentation, thought, thinking that you were better than others. And I, do, I did uh, around um, 2.5 to 3 centimeters of distance um, in the neckline. So I realized that I had some cases of silmastia, <laughs> and I decided to look what was happening, and I realized that I had to change from 2.53 to 3 or more. And now what they do is usually is a distance between the midline and the breast around 1.7, 1.8 centimeters. That's a, a, around about um, 3.4, 3.6 between both breasts. Okay, there are several other things that we, that we can do. Uh, maybe the most extended, the most used is a capsule raffid. It was described 30 years ago. Um, it associates the capsule raffid is a line of shooter at 1.5 the middle line of usually are single stitches of a non-absorbable shooter. Non-absorbable. Uh, usually, we usually use proline 30. And also, it's interesting to associate a mirror image capsulotomy. That's here in the lateral to do capsulotomy in order to have less tension on the suture line. So, we usually make a capsulography here, capsulotomy here. In both, in both sides, it is necessary that usually it is. <clears throat> to achieve better results, four years ago, Harris described something um, something um, similar to what was said to Dr. Kim before, that he described um, that before the capsulography to do a capsulotomy um, thermal, thermal in order to reduce the, spa, the space that is free in the breast pocket. In the breast pocket. There are other alternatives like synthetic, synthetic meshes, fat grafting, 
transcutaneous fixation with uh, the use of these matrices and removal of the implants. <coughs> from, my point, uh, from my point of view, the best alternative is the capsulography associated with the mirror capsule alternative. Okay, here we have one case, one patient that we operate and she had a simmastia. He saw he he he, he was from um, from Barcelona, he sent us this photo, and I'm happy with the result. I found that my breast is too um, too close. And if, if you see the pocket was too medial. Hmm? Uh, it was even more than what we see in the photo because the, the, the breast was nearly um, <coughs> together one to another. What we did, we did, we did two things. With a capsule raffi 1.5 centimeters, a pro proven capsule raffi 1.5 centimeters far from the midline, two lines, <coughs> two lines, one in each side, and also we did a capsule, a mirror capsule to me in the other side. That was the result. She, after three months, she sent a photo from home. I'm very happy. Usually with this technique we have good results. Also, if they are very thin patients, we've done sometimes we have associated a uh, fat graft. If we so if we because um, it can, you can find patients with sigma sigmastia associated to rippling. And that's it. Thanks a lot. <coughs>